Hello, my name is Chris Hammond. I'm the director of training here with .NET Nuke Corporation. In this brief video, I'm going to talk to you about CSS precedents in .NET Nuke, cascading style sheets. Now within .NET Nuke, there are a number of different style sheets that come with the platform and they get loaded in a very specific order. So you can see the standard listing here on the screen. Any modules that you have on a .NET Nuke page that have their own module.css file will be loaded first. After that, you're going to have a file called default.css that's loaded on every .NET Nuke page of every .NET Nuke website in existence. And then after that, you get into some CSS files specifically for your skins. So depending on where your skins are installed, they may or may not show up in the underscore default folder. It might be in a number folder. After that, it'll be in a folder called skins. And then depending on the name of your package, there will be a folder there for your package name. Now, every skin is typically going to have a file called skin.css that will be loaded on every skin in a package. Now, after that, it's also possible to have a skin name specific CSS file. So if your skin is called home page or your skin is called admin page, you might have a CSS file specifically set up for those pages. After that, we're going to load any module containers that are loaded on the page. So the same thing with skins. We have package names for our containers. Every package will typically have a container.css file. And then individual containers themselves might have a container name.css file within their package. Now, after that, you're going to then load portal.css. Now, every portal within .NET has a portal.css file living in the root of its file system. So typically, that's going to be in portal slash and then a number and then inside of there. In most cases, that number will be zero depending on how many portals you have installed within .NET Nuke. So that's the basic order of CSS files that get loaded in .NET Nuke. The first thing loaded has the least precedence. The last thing loaded has the most precedence. Now, in a previous video, we showed you how you can go in and edit portal.css. And in future videos, we'll deal more directly with the skins and the containers. After portal.css comes anything that's loaded inline either on the page or even in the header of the page, depending on the modules in play. Typically, this inline CSS is bad form. It's not recommended. The problem being, if it comes after portal.css, portal.css typically provides your last line of defense, or your last ability to override CSS. If there's code after that, you can't override it typically with portal.css, unless you start using some of the properties for important within style sheets. So what we're going to do now is we're going to switch over to Visual Studio where I have some source code from two pages. Now this is not the entire code of the page, but what it is is just a, a home page of .NET Nuke. It's the style sheet information for the home page of a plain .NET Nuke 5.6.2 site. So on the home page, you would have your first reference to a style sheet, which is loading default.css. Now you'll notice this particular page doesn't have a reference to module.css. That's because the, the default home page in .NET Nuke only has HTML modules on it, and the HTML module does not have a custom CSS file. So after that, we then get our skin.css, which is coming from the minimal XGP skin package. After that, we get the minimal XGP skin package again, but this time we're loading index.css. So within the minimal XGP skin package, there are multiple skins. One of those is called index, so that CSS file gets loaded. And then for the containers, there's a minimal XGP container with a container.css file. And then there's a specific CSS file for title gray, which is one of the containers that comes with .NET Nuke. And then finally, we get portal.css, which is loading. Now, after that, there is some additional CSS that's being loaded within the default homepage for .NET Nuke. That's because of the control panel and the way the control panel loads within .NET Nuke. So you can see here, there are a number of other style sheets that are being loaded for the ribbon bar control panel within DNN. Now I have another page open here that pretty much has the same content except for the very first couple of lines. The first line here loads up a module specific CSS file. So within previous videos, you might have seen we demonstrated a module called DNN Simple Article. And this is the, the CSS for a page that has that module loaded on it. You can see the first thing loaded is module.css for out of the DNN Simple Article module. Then after that, we have default.css, skin.css, index, 
and so forth and so on. All of the same CSS files that we saw on the previous screen. So that's a brief introduction into cascading style sheets and their order, at least within .NET Nuke. In future videos, we'll go into more details on what individual style sheets typically contain. In the meantime, I'd encourage you to check out our .NET Nuke training page. You can find it under the Resources tab on .NET Nuke.com. There you'll find a variety of free videos as well as information about our instructor-led training and information about our custom online and on-site training offerings. Again, this is Chris Hammond with .NET Nuke Corporation. Thanks for watching the video.